Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope that everyone is uh, warmed up a little bit from this morning. I know it was a little chilly. Can y'all tell that fall is finally here? It showed its face this morning for sure. Uh, a few announcements to start our service off this morning is we do have a church council meeting tonight via Zoom at 6 p.m. If you need those numbers, please contact Pastor Randall. Uh, this meeting is uh, about charge conferences coming up, and we just have to approve some things to send to charge conference. Uh, so church council members, please remember that at 6 p.m. tonight on Zoom. Also, uh, tonight, the children, youth, and families, we're going to go to the Lothridge uh, Farms, Corn Maze, and Pumpkin Patch. If uh, you're going to be riding the bus, you need to be here at 4 p.m. Uh, with the youth, or if you want to just meet us as a family there, you can meet us there at 4.30 p.m., and we'll have a great time. It's $5 per person, and you just let them know that you're coming from the church to get that discount, and then we'll have a great time with the corn maze, and they have some a petting zoo and some inflatables and some awesome some good stuff. So we hope to see you tonight at the corn maze, uh, 4.30 if you're meeting us there, or 4 p.m. here if you're going to ride the bus. And then starting next Sunday, we're going to be starting our kickoff for Operation Christmas Child. That's a wonderful ministry that we do every year, so we hope that you'll uh, think about doing a shoebox this year, and we'll give some more information about that next Sunday. And you uh, can also, again, do an, a box online if you'd like to do that as well. Sorry, we've got lots of announcements I'm trying to flip through. Uh, we do have our, I want to make you aware of our ski trip, uh, so we'll be doing that deposit here shortly, the 31st. I may extend that a couple of weeks to allow families to get, uh, get that into us, but if you would like to sign up for the ski trip, uh, please let me know as soon as possible, and uh, when you sign up, you need to pay your deposit for that as well. And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to be starting our children's Christmas play practice, so that'll be on Wednesday, November the 3rd. And that'll kind of start right after the fall festival. It'll be that next Wednesday, and we're going to have a great children's play this year. The children are very excited to present something to you guys. Uh, we were not able to do one last year because of COVID, so we're uh, exercised, and the kids are exercised to do that for you this year. And the, uh, the practice will begin on November the 3rd uh, for the Christmas play. And the Christmas play, if you want to mark your calendar, will be December the 8th. I can't believe we're already talking about Christmas things. It's uh, exciting. It's that time of the year. So we're just holiday after holiday after holiday. And then I wanted to uh, make you aware as well of the All Saints banner that is right outside of this door. And we uh, I have a banner, and uh, Miss Helen is uh, doing some things with that. Did, uh, did you want to say anything to it? or? voice anymore um, pe for people who had just passed this last year this is for anybody that you want to remember on All Saints Sunday which is on the 31st this year um, so w anyone that you want to have remembered you just uh, go out and put their name on the little tag and pin it with the bell to the banner and we will display that uh, on the 31st so anybody and again, that is located outside this door right here. Right there. And uh, also we have an announcement. For, we're having a youth bonfire in a, a few weeks. And I had uh, I sent Ms. Karen the wrong date. That is Sunday, November the 7th is when that bonfire should be. So uh, we look forward to our youth coming to that bonfire at the Shields home. And we just thank the Shields for hosting us again this year for that bonfire. And again, that's on Sunday, November the 7th. And then lastly, Fall Festival. Y'all excited? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the Fall Festival is not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, and we're super excited. I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you that have donated candy and chips and waters, and we, we've just got stuff coming out of every compartment and everything. So uh, thank you for all of your donations. Uh, this uh, ministry would not be possible without each of you. And so we have a little promo video that we want to show to get you even more hyped up about the Fall Festival. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen.
last gigging. Are y'all excited? Yeah. And so if you've uh, never uh, been a part of our fall festival, as you can see, we have a, a slew of folks that come, and we, uh, it's a way for us to show the community the love of Jesus, and everything is free. So all the inflatables, all the food, everything that we offer is always free. So that's a wonderful ministry that we do to the community. And uh, we, need, uh, we still need some volunteers to help run some games. So if you are interested in helping, please come talk to me afterwards, and I can point exactly where we need some help uh, or where we could have you uh, help. And we also, also need help set up the day before and the day of. It, it takes a lot to get everything put up, so uh, please let me know if you're able to help that night. And if you're not able to be in person to help, uh, you can help us through your prayers. Uh, God, you know, we, we really need everything to go well, and you can pray for a nice sunny day uh, that night as well because everything will be outside. Uh, but those are all the announcements we have this morning. There are several others in the bulletin, so please pick up a bulletin. And at this time, if you'll stand up and welcome one another to worship and ask them if you had to wear some extra layers this morning for coming to church because it was cold out there. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. We are blessed to be worshiping with you in person or online on, on WQCH, AM 1590 and 93.7 FM. Did you know that we're also on the radio? I mean, we're not live, but we um, put this service on next week's radio. When I go home, uh, I make sure that I find 30 minutes in this service to put on the radio, and every Sunday at 11.30, on WQCH, AM, FM, we are on the radio. And they're AM and FM, and we have 6,000 potential persons who hear our service. So that's another element that we are worshiping with. So uh, when I say that, 
know that uh, that's why I'm saying that because we want to greet those persons who are listening to us on WQCH, AM and FM, welcoming them to the service. And we also want people to know in our community that if they are looking for a church, that 301 South uh, Main Street is a good place to be here at Lafayette First Methodist Church for God to plant you and to grow. We invite you to be here. We have a nine o'clock service downstairs. I, I was listening to some other churches uh, advertise for their contemporary service. Do you know how they advertise for it? They say, come to church and only dress once. I thought, I've never heard of that before. I mean, it's like, what do you mean? They say, well, if you go to 11 o'clock, you, you have to dress twice. And I thought, that's true, because when I went to 11 o'clock, I had to put on my, I had to dress up and go to church, and then I changed clothes when I went home. I mean, you know, you dress, you undo. So if you only come to 9 o'clock, you only have to dress once. I thought, I've never thought about that, so I'm going to steal that. So we are glad that you are here. Hear these call, hear, hear these words for the call to worship. Praise the Lord for God is great indeed. Let us sing praises for God's glorious works. We give glory, honor, and thanksgiving to the Lord who makes and sustains all things. Our first hymn this morning is found on page 73. It's in your hymnal and it's on the screen. Oh, worship the King. May we stand and sing together. And is it not a joy to have our choir back in worship service? Amen? Welcome back. Welcome back. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he ascended from dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Hymn number 698, God of the Ages. May we sing together. be seated. And at this time, any children like to come down for our children's time? can come on down. And I've got some goodies, but before we get to that, we have a verse that I want us to read. This is from the gospel lesson for this Sunday. I know that Pastor Randall's been in the book of Job, so we're going to hear from the New Testament this morning. It says, in Mark 10, 45, it says, For the Son of Man, now the Son of Man is a little a different name of somebody. Do we know who that's talking about in that passage? Who do we call the Son of Man? Jesus, that's right. So sometimes in the Bible we hear the Son of Man referred to as Jesus instead of his name. It says, The Son of Man, or Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And I want y'all to help me show some stuff to the congregation this morning, okay? All right, Millie, you want to stand up for us? So, JB, you're a firefighter, and Millie is a construction worker, and then we have an apron here. Who wears an apron? A baker. Yeah, that's right, a baker or a chef. Then I've also got a broom and a vacuum. All right. Y'all turn around and let everybody see how good y'all look. (laughs) 
All right. Now y'all can have a seat. Yes, you, you can hand me back all the stuff. All right. Lots of good stuff this morning. And now what do all these things have in common? The firefighter and the construction worker and then a, a broom and a, their jobs and their jobs where people serve one another. JB, you can have a seat for me. JB, have a seat for me. And so just like in our passage, it says that Jesus did not come to be served, but he came to serve. And we have all these different jobs. And uh, I used Dr. Scoggins as an example in the service as well this morning when he was playing guitar that he could have worn his uh, lab coat and his stethoscope and he would be our doctor. You know, and we have all these different jobs where we serve. And did you know that as Christians that we are called to serve as well? And we have the big fall festival coming up next week. Mm -hmm. And so we have the big fall festival where we, as a church, get to serve our community. And sometimes we don't think about how much something like having candy or doing these little things like having games and giving away free hot dogs can mean to our community and how God has given us the ability as a church to serve and to show people the love of Jesus. And so we are living out just as Jesus said that he did not come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life. We are telling people all about Jesus by us serving the community. So I thought this gospel lesson was a good reminder for us to, to be in service of our community and that we are not at the center, but that Jesus is at the center and that we are to show others and point others to him. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you give us the ability and the resources to reach out to our community and show them your love and uh, through this fall festival. And I pray that uh, in whatever job we have, Lord, help us to serve uh, uh, well and to, to point people to you in whatever job or career we have, Lord. Help us to do that this week. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the children are getting candy, we... Uh are displaying our quilts today. We have a quilt ministry in this church that whenever people are going through times of struggle, we uh, have people who come together and, and piece quilts together and give to them. And then during the service, we have ties, uh, strings that we will tie knots and prayers that these uh, ties represent. So if you are a man or a woman and would like to come and uh, tie some of these knots and to say a prayer, we will be giving these quilts. One will be given to uh, Keith Bra Braden, am I pronouncing that right? Keith Braden, and one is going to be given to someone at Fall Festival. So I don't know who that will be, but we invite you to come at this time, if you would, and uh, tie a knot and to say a prayer so that when we give them out, people will know that they are prepared to, uh, to take them home with them, remembering that they are remembered in our prayers. So if you would come during this time, and as you are coming, we will be praying together, and after you are through with uh, tying and saying your prayer, you are welcome to return to your seat. On the screen, you will see an opportunity uh, to join us as we have our call to worship, but hear this call to worship first and then join us as we confess our sins together. First, the call to worship says, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, trusting in the mercy of our Lord. Pray with me as we confess. Merciful and gentle God, we have wanted reward without sacrifice. We have been unwilling to serve and have not humbled ourselves in obedience. Forgive our hubris, gracious God. Correct our ignorant ways and help us to know your glory through servanthood. Guide us to be true followers of your way through Jesus Christ our Lord. People of God, our sins are forgiven. For the God who made all things knows our weaknesses. Therefore, turn away from sin and obey the ways of the Lord. Be reconciled to the community in service. Pray with me, if you will, audibly or silently, concerning those peoples that's on your hearts and minds as we pray to the Lord together. Eternal God, you are our high priest. 
who offered yourself for us with your prayers and tears, your very body in Jesus Christ. Help us to pray and offer supplication for ourselves and our community. We pray for our local government, our national government, the global church, that it might exhibit the way of service in faith and love. We pray for the international community, that it might learn the way of peace. We pray for people on the mission field who are sharing your good news and paying the ultimate price with their very lives of sharing Christ that for some is a threat and that they, weigh, they think that the way to get peace, the way to get silence is to rid them. Yet their blood is seeds that grow for even the gates of hell shall not prevail the kingdom of God. We pray for those who suffer. We pray for those who are in need of your healing. We pray for this world in which we live in. We pray that we are good stewards. We remember those who have come to their eternal rest. We wrap them in your arms of love and comfort knowing that they are in good stead. We lift up in silence all those that we are praying for who are in the corners of our hearts for you know all understanding and all things. We ask all these things, Almighty God, in the name of our Creator, our servant priest Jesus, and the Holy Spirit who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If the ushers will come at this time, we will continue in our worship service with our tithes. May we pray. Your church is giving church, O oh Lord, because you are a God who gives. We give because you have first given to us. We don't give in order that you would give. We give because you give. So bless our giving for we have a example, a model in which to give from, that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
be seated. Would you join me by standing up and let's applauding our, uh, our choir. Would you stand please and let us show our appreciation to our choir. Allison, Gwen, Annie, thank you so much. Guys, we've missed you. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Hear this prayer of illumination. O oh God, your word gives us counsel for our understanding. 
enable us to receive it today. In the name of your Son, who is our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Job 38, 1 through 7, and verses 34 through 41 is our lectionary text. We've been reading about Job, and in our pandemic, and in our time of struggling, Job has found a place in our life where we are aware that God is present with us, but sometimes not. we may not always be aware, and sometimes our feeling and our thoughts and all, that uh, God hears us and understands why we are the way we are, when we are the way we are. So we want to hear Job's word that brings to us reality, that sometimes uh, there's things that we think about, things that we say, things that we would like to do. Well, Job gets his wish because he's been looking to have a word with the Lord. Well, he's getting ready to get it uh, in more ways than one. Job 38, 1 through 7, hear, hear these words. It says, Then the Lord answered Job. Notice where he answers him out of. He answers him out of the what? The whirlwind. The whirlwind. Remember that uh, Elijah went to the cave once and looked and... God wasn't in the whirlwind, wasn't in the fire, but was in a still, small voice. But here, God speaks out of the whirlwind. And what does he say? Of course, this is all that Job is going through. Who is this? Who is this? Who's he talking about? Job. Who is this that darkens? Who has been seen to be in the darkness? God. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? In other words, Who's talking about something that they don't know what they're talking about? Mm-hmm. I resemble that remark. I don't know if you resemble that remark. I resemble that remark. Gird up your loins like a man or pull up your diaper. There might be another way of saying it. I will question you. Who will question who? God will question Job. And you, who is you, Job, will declare to me, who is me, God. Here's the first question. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind. Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their convert? Who provides for the raven its prey? When its young ones cry to God and wonder about for lack of food. Mm. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, the issue uh, has been do whatever you want to to Job and see if he loses his integrity. Uh, The bet is that he will, but God says he won't, so he takes that bet and then When he doesn't lose his integrity, then his health is touched and Job maintains his integrity. And what that means is that Job continues to remember who he is. Do you know who you are? Do I know who I am? When you go through things in life, do you remember who you are? When you lose things in life, do you remember who you are, if you lost your health, would you remember who you are? If you lost something very valuable, would you remember who you are? The bet is that Job will remember who he is, 
and he will maintain his integrity regardless what he loses, even his health. And Job does remember who he is, but it seems to be that in this struggle, in this remembrance, maybe sometimes we forget who God is. Now yesterday, at the end of the service of celebrating Kathleen Duval Capers Memorial Service, Vince Stallings came up and sang in a cappella, Amazing Grace, and brothers and sisters, that was a moment that I can tell you that I and I think the people there remembered who they were. Because Dr. Scoggins was sitting to my left and I almost grabbed him and I said, I almost said, Ted, we're going, hang on. <laughs> After it was over, I was going to get with Jim. I said, Jim, you best get a roofer because there's holes all in this ceiling up here because it raised itself. God has some questions for Job, but you see, Job had some questions for God. His questions were this. I want to talk to you, God, about how you run in the world. I mean, like my comforters tried to tell me, I mean, when things happen, you, you respond, yes, but I don't know what I've done to bring this on, and they're trying to tell me, and I'm not seeing it, so they're not able to answer my question, so I need you to answer my question. Question. So last Sunday we heard that Job went looking for God. He had an affidavit. He was going to bring him in court. He had some questions. It's a lot like Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, who ministered to people who were very, very sick. She said that when she died, she had some questions she wanted to ask, to ask God. Some say that's why God let her live so long. Because God did not want Mother Teresa asking him these questions that he wouldn't really be able to say to her where she would understand. You see, there's a lot of things, brothers and sisters, that I just don't think that God is ever going to be able to say to me where I go, gosh, why didn't I think of that? There's things that happen to you. There's things that happen to me. There's things that happen to the world that I can't make any sense out of. I don't know if God makes any sense out of it. If God makes any sense out of it, it's beyond me, but maybe that's what I need to remember. Because God does not think like me. His thoughts are above my thoughts. His way are above my ways. I, I sometimes forget that. Sometimes I, 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 look, I look at a flea. And I'll go, why, Lord? Why would Noah make a place on his ark and, and, and bring this insect that I'm getting ready to peach its little head off? <laughs> I mean, what's its purpose? Or a bee flying around with a stinger. I mean, with a stinger. And you go, there's got to be a purpose, but I mean... A yellow jacket? I mean, okay, yeah, for a football team, but I mean, an insect? I mean, why? And things happen to you and happen to me and we're saints in the Lord. You know, who we are is who we are in Christ. That's who we are. If you want to re be reminded who we are in Jesus Christ, come to David Autry's Bible study every Thursday at 10 o'clock and David will remind you and me who we are, not in ourselves, not in one another, but who we are in Christ Jesus. How we are not supposed to work through Jesus, but how Jesus is to work through you and me. It's a constant theme that David continues to remind you and me and that's the story of the good news, how God has saved us in order to work through us to share the good news. And sometimes that good news can be very difficult to share, especially if people have their minds made up how God works. 
If mine and your life seems to be going south, people might wonder, well, you and I must be in trouble. In other words, they look at what you and I are going through instead of who God is. I know that there are times when I look at myself and I see what's going on in myself and all of a sudden my external circumstances all of a sudden gets in my way of remembering who God is. Therefore, God's integrity is in jeopardy. And I need to remember who I am, made in the image of God, but God is my God. I mean, there was a question that the United Methodist Church asks all United Methodists who wants to be ordained. It's, it's a Wesleyan question. And they want you to answer the question, what does it mean that Jesus is your Lord? Write me a paragraph that says, how is Jesus your Lord? Well, do you know who your Lord is? Do you know what your Lord does? Your Lord tells you what to do. Say what? Your Lord tells you what to do. Hey, nobody tell me what to do. Say what? Well, I'm from the South. <laughs> you tell me what to do and, and, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, t I'll say stuff to you. <laughs> and it won't be church stuff either. I mean, you don't, you don't tell me what to do. I decide what I'm going to do. I, I don't need no Lord. I'm my own Lord. I'll tell myself what to do. Well, we all know what happened to Israel when she did what was right in her own eyes. We know what happens to people who think they don't need a Lord and don't need someone to guide and direct them. We, we know what happens. I mean, you and I know that because maybe we've lived that way and we've gotten ourselves in a mess. And what we thought we didn't know we didn't need, we needed. I mean, watch the movie Bruce Almighty. He believed that God could fix things in five minutes until God gave him his power and said, go ahead, Bruce, I'm going to go on vacation. You take it. And Bruce found out it's not as easy as what one would imagine. I mean, for him... Everybody wanted to win the lottery, right? You remember the movie? So what does he do? He lets everybody win the lottery. Everybody wins $14. <laughs> I mean, that should make everybody happy. I mean, everybody wins the lottery. Everybody won $14. But it made them mad as all get out. They started burning down the city. And one day, Bruce Almighty found out something. He's not God. He can't make people do what people should do, though he would try. He even tried to make a girl love him. He couldn't change her will. It had to be her choice. This past Thursday, you and I have the opportunity of housing the drug court graduation. Judge Thompson brings people over who's been in a two-year program to stay clean, which is a very difficult thing to do. And I heard them out in the corridor of the, of the church in the lawn. They were cheering they were cheering. They were excited because they were graduating. They had accomplished something that maybe people thought they wouldn't. People were betting against them, but some were betting for them. And one theme that kept coming through what these men said when they came up to, to share is that they had restored relationships. That was a theme in all of them, that they had broken relationships with family, but they had restored them. And then there was one who said something I will never forget. He got a job somewhere, and you know, if you're an addict and you've been in prison or you've been in jail, try to get a job, nobody wants you. But thank God there are places in Walker County who will hire you and give you a chance. There are people who come to this graduation who have cards 
that they'll hand out and say, do you need a job? I can get you a job, that they'll give you a chance. And this person said that they had been working at a place for a while, and one day their supervisor came to them and handed them the keys to the door of the industry. He said, do you know what that means? Well, I mean, I've been handed keys. Haven't you been handed keys? When I came to this church, I was handed keys. I didn't feel anything. I just thought, thank you very much. He said, when someone hands me a key, that means they trust me. He says, do you know how hard that is to get back? How hard that is to maintain when you've destroyed it? Job maintained his integrity, but in his struggle, he wasn't too sure about God. And it affected him. It affected his trust, his relationship. But then that's because he began thinking about God as he thought about himself. And God is such on another level than Job. God is the God who makes the sparrow, who also makes the whale, who also makes the flea. Whenever I was looking at that flea, I thought, this flea has a heart and it's beating. It has blood in its veins and it is so small. Who in the world could ever create that? There are times, brothers and sisters, when our God is just too small. The God that created this world is a large God who can do a lot of things. A lot of people bet against the people he bets on. He's betting on you and me. He's betting that you and I will maintain our integrity and that we will not curse to his face. And one day when we stand before him face to face, we will have been faithful for he will say to you and me, good and faithful servant, come in. You've been faithful in a few things. I will make you faithful in many things. That is something that you and I are looking forward to hearing, is God to welcome us in. But before he does that, we pray that he would help us maintain our integrity because there are things that you and I are going through today that can cause us and contribute to us giving up but we're not going to give up. We're going to keep going regardless of what happens to us in this world because we serve a God who has overcome the world. He's overcome sin. He's overcome death. And you and I are in that person. That's where we're one. That's where we're a child. It's because of what he has done for us and not because of what we do for him. And I know that David Autry would be very proud of me for saying that because I know he would say to me, you've been listening on Thursday morning, haven't you? <laughs> and I would like to say to David, yes, David, we've been listening. Keep saying it to us. Keep saying it to us. For it's the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn number 122 is our closing hymn. God of the Sparrow. Would you please stand as we sing this together?
How does God's children say home? Who at the First United Methodist Church? This is how we say home. Come to the fall festival. <laughs> come to the fall festival. You want to come home? Come to the fall festival. For it's the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.